I was already the top agent in Alabama long before I was officially the top agent in Alabama. In my mind, I was already, even though I was nowhere near it, I was already in my mind the top agent. You know, the only thing about, the, the only thing you should be focused on is how do I get to a thousand right now? How can I talk to enough people in my market and make these great first impressions to grab this data of 500 more people? That's all you should be, that's all you need to be focused on. How, how do you follow up with, with that many? Is that someone that you just send your, your weekly letter to? Or yeah, exactly. No, no, exactly. It's all weekly email, right? So it's all personal brand built with that 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 fifteen thousand. It creates a situation where you don't. It's not a must that we, um, you know, that we call those people every year or do that. We're touching them with the email, and and since we create the email, we're we're custom building the email around our personality. It's not a drip campaign, automatic email, generic content. It's custom content around who we are that builds a relationship with them. It does all the heavy lifting for you, okay? And when, you, when you're playing that game, we're playing a volume game, right? So yeah, sure. I mean, someone who has, you know, 700 people who, you know, and they call those 700 every, you know, year or every six months, you know, and really goes deep, deep, deep with those 700 people, that could be the equivalent to 5,000 people for me in terms of production, quite possibly, you know, I don't know. But when you play the volume game and the personal branding game, it puts you in a position where you don't have to attend to them so much, you still have that small percentage of your database reaching out to you to close deals who love you and want to do business with you, where you're not constantly in this mode of chasing, 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 chasing. So the thing is about like importing a ton of emails of people that you've never talked to before is you can get your account flagged, right? So that's the first thing is like when you, when you import that many emails all at one time, especially, and it has a lot to do with the age of your account. If you have an account that is a week old or a month old or a couple months old, they're really watching you. And the older your account is, the less they are keeping your eye, that you know, they feel like you are doing the right things. They don't wanna be in a position, MailChimp's not gonna be in a position to, you know, let you or allow you, if they can help it, send a bunch of spam mail to a bunch of bad emails and or people who don't want your content, okay? So what you have to do is you have to slowly drip that, those emails into your database. There, there's a couple things here. One. You know, you want to do this at a, you know, like a, like a 50 emails a day type rate for a little while, you know, and kind of see if any red flags get thrown up. Because if a red flag gets thrown up, MailChimp's going to delete all those that you just imported. You don't want to import 3,000 and throw up a red flag. You call MailChimp and then they say, we're going to delete all these emails because we don't believe in the, you know, we don't believe in the origin of these emails, right? You're really putting your, um, your account at risk in my opinion. Now, now let's look at the flip side. If you have a, let's just say, owner directory that was given to you by somebody in HOA, and another owner in the complex who ac accidentally slipped and fell and the owner directory fell out of their pocket and you just happened to come along and grab it, those are 100% correct emails, right? That's a different ball game. We know for sure those are good and we can put those in our database little by little, being careful how we do it. We might wanna call them before we do it, that kind of thing, right, and kind of strategize there. But be careful, guys, with number one, uploading a ton of emails, even if they are 100% correct, if you have a, a newer account, they'll flag your account and shut you down. And number two, the quality of the list that you're putting in there, because these emails that are not valid can really jeopardize your your emails that are going to the valid email addresses actually hitting their inbox because now they're saying spam, spam, spam. And the filters are picking it up and throwing it to people's promotion and spam folders. You look at a database of a thousand Facebook leads, you know, and you, you look at the data, I mean, what percent of that data is not valid, right? There's definitely a, definitely I would say a pretty good percentage, I would think. Right. Um, you know, so yeah, no, if, if it's what you're saying, people that she met around town, people she called, clients, stuff like that, that is a gold mine. Do you have phone numbers? 
if she's giving you all data with phone numbers and this, that, notes on each person, if you know a lot of data, that is a gold mine. And you need to sit there for the rest of the year and call every single one of those people. <laughs> and introduce yourself, right? If you if you if you if you take those 2000 and you throw them in constant contacts and you start doing the weekly email, great. Okay? Great. That that's a good that's good. Like we can we can retain some business there. But you're looking at like a 600% increase in, in conversion if you will also call them and get to know them and talk to them, right? And you can even tell them, hey, you know, whatever her name is, you know, got out of the business. I know you, you know, you, you did some business with her or whatever the case may be. And, you know, she, she I'm kind of taking over her business for her, you know, I'm Dane, you know, is there anything I can do for you? I'd like to introduce myself and see if there's anything I can do for you today. See, thinking and knowing are two different things. So we need to know their situation, right? So, so we can't even answer that question until we know for a fact that they have the ability financially to buy before they sell. Well, listen, when you're dealing with that close of price range, 600 to 800, that's not a big difference. When you go from like, you know, 800 to 1.5 or 2 million, then we're talking about some big fluctuations and markets doing different things. And it might matter if you, you know, wait and do this and sell that and buy now and all that stuff. But when you're talking about six to 800, you know, I mean, you know, it, it comes down to, for me, when are they ready? You know, when are they ready? Well, what I was asking, would you list the house first or would you look, look for their house first is what I was asking. If they can buy before they sell, I would go ahead and get them in their new house now. Okay, all right. I mean, like when I bought my house, I could buy before I sold. So I bought my house, completely moved in, you know, and then I, I cleaned up my old house and put it on the market. I wasn't in a hurry. I wasn't like, it wasn't like coming down to the wire. I didn't have the moving truck ready the day of closing, moving to the next one. And if one little thing went wrong, then, you know, I paid for a moving truck for three days all of a sudden. You know, it's a lot less stressful. It's a lot less stressful for someone to not be pressured time wise to move into a place, you know, at a certain time frame and then sell their house real fast. You know, it was a great experience for me. To, to, to do it slow, move over, and then clean up my house, have a yard sale, and sell the house, right? In your, in your database, you're gonna have a group of clients who will never use another agent. You're gonna have a group of clients who may or may not use you here and there. You got agents who might use you once again, right? I'm talking about that concentrated group of loyal clients, unlimited amount of those clients for each and every one of you in each of your markets. The problem is you're thinking all these negative thoughts and you're not putting the work in necessary to get yourself in front of enough people to, to find those loyal clients. You're quitting too soon. You know, you're making a hundred calls and then you're judging the entire process on the 10 people that picked up and you talked to had two great conversations that aren't gonna lead to anything in the next 30 days. And you're judging the whole process on this one, you know, test group of a hundred calls it's um it hurts my heart is what it does to see you guys going through what a lot of you go through because I, I deal with it on a daily basis i talk to tens of agents a day and a lot of it is complete self-doubt complete self-sabotage complete lies and excuses that you start to believe so what i want you guys to do is completely reverse that entire situation on yourself Look yourself in the mirror and realize that, wait a minute, everything I was thinking about this is completely wrong, right? And then realize what it is, okay, the reality of the situation, and then use that as motivation to get excited. You know, wait a minute, there's unlimited business over here, right? And I, all I gotta do is go get it and put the work in. The first law of building a predictable business is visualization. You got to visualize where you're going and believe that you can get there and understand everything I just talked about about the industry, okay? Before I was the top agent in Alabama, I was already the top agent in Alabama long before I was officially the top agent in Alabama. In my mind, I was already, even though I was nowhere near it, I was already in my mind the top agent um, because I felt like I was outworking every single agent in the state. 
And if I'm out working every agent in the state, I don't care what the results say. That's not what I'm going by. I'm going by who's putting in the most effort. And so every day when I went to sleep, I knew that I was putting in more work than anybody out there. And so in my mind, I, I was the winner that day. I don't care that they closed more deals than me. I don't judge your business based on how many deals you close. Right? I'm, I want, I'm gonna take a close look into your business and, and audit your business based on the effort you're putting in and what your communication skill level is, right? And what your personal branding machine is, right? What system are you using to never let anybody forget who you are? Yeah, like everyone needs to be going all in right now with accumulating as many relationships with property owners in your market as humanly possible. I believe the day is going to come where sellers turn around and say, I'm ready to sell because I believe there's a lot of pent up demand of people who want to sell. Uh, the market has slowed down a little, but you sellers are still kind of holding tight, right? Inventory hasn't exploded even though it has softened a little bit. Um, I don't think we've got to the point where sellers are really, because here's the thing, even though the market is softened and demand has come down just a tad, just a tad, not, not a whole lot, just a tad, even though that has happened, inventory hasn't opened up. See, a lot of these sellers are still in the same boat, even though the market softened, they're still in the same boat of not being able to find something to move to because inventory hasn't you know, skyrocketed. Um, so they're still in the same boat. That's why the market is softened, but we aren't seeing, you know, sellers calling us to list their properties because until we, it's going to kind of be a chicken and egg thing, which is going to come first, you know, um, you know, without the seller saying, Hey, I want to sell, you know, inventory can't really go up. And then, but because inventory doesn't go up, they're not really wanting to sell. So it's one of those tug and pull things. All right. So, but I think, um, at some point something's going to happen and something's got to give, in my opinion, but listen, here's the cool thing. When you're out there and you're building and you're accumulating, it doesn't matter what the market does, right? Nobody can predict what the market's gonna do, okay? The universe, the universe is telling you that you haven't done enough to get the results that you are after, right? When, when you put enough effort in, the universe is gonna reward you with the results. Until then, until you've put enough work in, and the thing is, is you don't know how much effort that's going to be. You have this expectation that it's this much effort, when really, it's this much effort. Way more than you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Right? So how did I get into a boss mindset? Because I wanted to succeed, and I didn't care about anything else. Got it. I mean, dude, if I sat around thinking about how am I going to make these calls or how am I going to muster up the courage to make these calls and stuff like that, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Give me something to do and I'm going to do it. I'm not going to debate if, I, if I'm, you know, I'm not getting punched in the face.